What is an endurance bike and why might you consider an endurance bike if you're in the market for a new bike this year? Well, with the help of this lovely Candale Synapse, I'm going to talk through all the key details on an endurance bike to make sure you're fully informed when you buy a new bike. Essentially, in a nutshell, an endurance bike combines the speed and performance of a road race bike but a lot more comfort and practical details like mudguard mounts and disc brakes and wired tyres that help you on rough roads and riding through all weathers from rain to snow and mud. Endurance bikes or sportive bikes as they used to be called came about in the early 2000s when Specialized launched the Roubaix. So the Roubaix was a bike that took the performance and the carbon frame from a road race bike but gave it a more relaxed geometry with a taller head tube and a shorter top tube just to put you in a more upright position so you're not going to do your back in on long rides. That Roubaix set the blueprint for a whole generation, a whole category of endurance bikes which most manufacturers now openly say are their best selling models. The bikes have come a long way since that original Roubaix with most bikes like their Synapse now on their second or third or even fourth generation with further refinements to improve the comfort and the speed and handling of these bikes. The number one difference between an endurance bike and a road race bike is in the geometry. That's the angles and measurements of a bike that sets the, the tone of a ride that you can expect when you're out on the road. With an endurance bike, you can expect a taller head tube and a shorter top tube. That puts the handlebars higher and closer to your body so you're not as stretched, not quite as aggressive as a road race bike. That's ideal for long rides, for people who aren't doing 20 or 30,000 miles like the pro riders are doing and are well used to an aggressive head down position. The other key differences are a longer wheelbase and a slacker head angle, which combine create a more stable, calmer handling when you're dealing with rough roads or just doing long rides where you don't want that super edgy, sharp, responsive handling of a road race bike it's a bit more dialed back, a bit easier to live with on a long ride. The other big difference is in the tyres that these endurance bikes will accommodate. With many modern endurance bikes accommodating 30, 35, and even in some cases up to a 38 millimetre wide tyre. Now a bigger tyre means a bigger volume of air between you and the road surface. You run lower pressures and that means a lot more comfort and a better tyre to deal with all these rough surfaces we all have to contend with. For comparison, a road race bike from a few years ago would take a maximum of a 25 mm wide tyre, but we're now seeing road race bikes take up to a 28. So they are edging closer to an endurance bike, but endurance bikes still offer a much bigger tyre capacity than any road race bike currently available. So wider tyres are a natural defence against rough roads and cobbles, but we're seeing some really interesting and fascinating designs attempting to provide an even smoother ride than a regular carbon bike with wide tyres. So in the case of this Candale Synapse, we have some clever carbon fibre layup and the tube shapes in the fork and the rear stays. Skinny and flattened, designed to provide more compliance by allowing the frame to absorb some of the vibrations. On this bike, there's also a really skinny seat post with the shape at the top of the clamp designed to provide maximum deflection at the saddle. So that is one approach and quite a few manufacturers take this approach. It's simple, it's elegant and it works very well. But if that's not enough for you, then some manufacturers are introducing really clever features. So Specialized on its latest Roubaix has a Future Shock, which is a small spring underneath the handlebar designed to provide 20 millimeters of suspension travel to let the handlebar isolate you from all the bumps coming through the road and a really skinny seat post inside a big diameter seat tube. And then Trek with Damani has the ISO speed decoupler, which is the most interesting design on any endurance bike. It basically separates the seat tube and seat post from the rest of the frame in a controlled manner and allows the saddle to move back and forth. They've introduced it at the front as well with a steering tube that's allowed to bend in relation to the headset. Endurance bikes are a lot more practical than regular road race bikes. Road race bikes are all about performance and winning races and going as fast as possible. There's no concessions to being practical or versatile, but endurance bikes are much better in that regard. This bike, for example, has mudguard mounts which means you can fit mud guards for winter training or commuting, and that makes it much more versatile and much easier to live with on a daily basis if it's your only bike as well. But it's not a given that an endurance bike, despite the extra tire clearance, will have mud guard mounts. And many endurance bikes are so performance focused, like the Specialized Roubaix, 
that there are sadly no mudguard mounts. So make sure you look carefully at the spec sheets on an endurance bike, but maybe I'll list some below which do take mudguards just to help you out when you're choosing an endurance bike. Another common feature on endurance bikes are disc brakes, and pretty much all endurance bikes now are designed around disc brakes, with some manufacturers not even offering a rim brake version. When disc brakes came out all those years ago, well, it wasn't actually that long ago, but it feels like a long time ago, endurance bikes were a natural place for disc brakes because these are bikes designed for year round, all weather, all terrain riding, and disc brakes give you the extra control and extra power and extra reliability for braking in all weathers and all conditions. So endurance bikes were a natural home for disc brakes and we've seen that just increase over the years. As I said, most endurance bikes like this one here are designed entirely around disc brakes. Another benefit of disc brakes in the early days especially was it allowed much easier tire clearance because they were restricted by a rim brake which at the time could only take up to a 28 millimeter wide tire unless you go to a long reach, a touring brake caliper. So disc brakes just allowed manufacturers to increase the tire clearance and achieve the extra comfort that these bikes are designed to offer. Another very important detail on an endurance bike are the lower and wider range gears you get compared to a road race bike. So this bike, for example, has a 5034 chain set and an 1130 cassette at the back, but we're seeing many bikes having even wider range cassettes, 1132, 1134, and with the advent of subcompact from Adventure and gravel bikes, you can get an even smaller chain set if you want even low gears for dealing with the steepest, toughest climbs you might want to contend with. There's a wide range of frame materials as well to choose from. This bike here is a carbon fiber high mod version, so very expensive, but very light and stiff. But you can choose from steel, titanium and aluminium, and there's a wide range of prices as well. Like this bike comes in a fast range of prices, different group sets and different wheels to suit your budget. So it's likely there's an endurance bike that suit your preference for frame material and your budget. Are there any downsides to an endurance bike? Well, there are a couple. It won't be as responsive or agile or sharp in the handling department as a road race bike. They're much more relaxed, much easier, more sedate handling than a road race bike. So if you want that edgy, fast, responsive handling, you're better off for a road race bike. The taller head tube also means it won't be as aerodynamic if you're trying to optimize your position for low drag compared to a road race bike, which are much more aggressive and have a lower, shorter head tube. And the weight of the bike is usually a bit higher than a road race bike because everything has been upsized. You've got a taller head tube, so there's a bigger frame, you've got bigger tires, disc brakes and other features which do usually add a bit more weight compared to a road race bike. But also not aerodynamic, although that's starting to change with the latest Trek Demani SLR and a new Specialized Roubaix, both considering aerodynamics for the first time. So we're seeing that starting to change. But at the moment, most bikes like this one here aren't designed with aerodynamics in mind, designed for comfort and other key priorities as mentioned already in this video. You might be considering an endurance bike because you want more comfort, you want comfort for long rides, sportives, challenges, rides in the mountains. You want it to be versatile for riding to work. You might want to do an all-dax, go touring, or even bike packing, which these bikes are really excellent for because they are so versatile. You can fit some wide tires. You can fit a light gravel tire with a bit of tread for going off-road, add some mud guards, add some bike packing equipment. There really is no limit to what you can do on an endurance bike, bar extreme gravel. They can pretty much do everything and deal with everything you might throw their way and that's why they are so popular. For me, I've been riding this very bike for the last two years, been my favorite bike for the last two years, my go-to bike, I've used it for everything. I've done a road race on it, I've done a 300 kilometer Audax, done some light bike packing with hotel overnighters, and I've just done all my training rides here in the Cotswolds, you know, going out every day, doing 30K rides, 100K rides. This bike is just so good at everything. So that is my guide to endurance bikes and what to look for if you're in the market for an endurance bike in 2020. If you've got any questions about this bike or any of the features I mentioned, do put them in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed watching the video, and I hope you did. And also consider subscribing to my channel for loads more bike reviews and tech stuff coming up soon. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.